Now in this video, we'll talk about the sequence for layer by layer palpation. So this is what happens once you begin your osteopathic exam. The sequence for layer by layer palpation is extremely specific. And if you're taking a test either in class or you're doing a practical in your laboratory component of your OMT course, you have to go in this exact order or you're going to lose points. So the first thing you wanna do is observe, then you test the temperature, then you palpate light touch, so that'll be the skin and then the fascia. Then you palpate using deep touch, that'll be the muscle, then the tendons, then the ligaments, and you'll conclude with an erythema friction rub. Let's run through these briefly one at a time. This video will be a rapid review just to remind you of everything that you need to do in each of these sequences. So first you observe. You're literally just looking at the patient's body and you're looking for evidence of wounds, trauma, lesions, visual evidence of somatic dysfunction. Do you see a tuft of hair or any gross asymmetries? Do you see any area that looks painful or overly restricted in its potential range of motion? So you're just looking. Then you're gonna test the temperature. And the most ideal way to do this on the exam to show the person that's testing you if this is a practical, that you know what you're doing, is to use what's called the volar aspect of your wrist. So if you take your wrist with your knuckles pointing up toward the ceiling and the pads of your fingers pointing down on the floor, so you're just holding your hand flat horizontally right out in front of you, if you then kind of extend your wrist upward so that your fingers are now pointing toward the ceiling, the part of your hand that's pointing down toward the floor, that's your volar aspect. And I tried to illustrate this, but on the slide in the 2D image, it's not super clear. And using that volar aspect of your wrist, you're gonna hold that about an inch from the patient's body. The idea here is that that volar aspect of your wrist can detect changes in temperature in the patient you're assessing. So the idea is that you'll be able to pick up on areas of redness and inflammation, or alternatively, areas of coldness and chronicity. Because remember that tissue texture changes have associated temperature changes. Now, as far as palpating from light to deep, I wanna just remind you briefly that when you're looking from the top down, it goes skin, fascia, deeper fascia, muscle, and then not pictured here, but beneath the muscle would be things like tendons and ligaments. So the order of palpation just follows the order of these layers as you go superficial to deep. So you start with light palpation, and that begins with palpating the skin. And at this portion, you're trying to figure out what does the skin feel like? And you're gonna do that really gently. So you're gonna use just the pads of your fingers, but you're not gonna be palpating deep enough where as you move your fingers over the patient's body that you see any redness on the patient's body or in the nail beds of your fingers. And if you wanna just understand what I'm talking about, take your fingers, you know, your pointer finger and your middle finger and push really hard on a table. You'll see that around your nail beds, the color of your nail beds will change to a bright red because you're forcing a lot of pressure in your fingers. And that's too hard. You, you reserve that layer of forceful palpation for the deep palpation. But for the light palpation, which is just skin and then fascia, you're gonna just gently stroke the patient's body. You're not gonna do it with enough pressure to change the color of your nail beds or to leave a lasting impression on the area of their skin that you're palpating. So in this stage, you're looking for changes in perspiration. You know, does the skin feel wet? Does it feel dry? Are there lesions that I can feel? Are there bumps? Again, the pressure should be light, so no change in the color of your nail beds. Then you work a little deeper and you wanna palpate the fascia. And you, you know, truthfully, you can't palpate fascia, but what you can do is you can palpate the skin still lightly, but with a little bit more force and move the skin so that it's gliding freely over the fascia. So the skin should be moving. And at this point, you've already felt the skin. And now on this step, you're just kind of moving the skin over the fascia to see does it slide easily. And as you do this, you wanna move your hand or your fingers in all directions. So up, down, right, left, clockwise, counterclockwise. If you're taking a practical, you know, you're doing this in front of somebody in an OMT lab, you need to demonstrate that you're moving the skin and moving, directing that skin over the fascia in all directions, because theoretically you're trying to figure out where's the ease and where's the bind. Now we move to deep palpation, and this is where you're gonna go muscles, tendons, ligaments. 
same principle here. Use all directions, let the prompter know that you know what you're doing, but more importantly at this stage, you're gonna add a little bit more pressure. So going back to your nail beds, now this is the time where you can push a little bit harder, obviously still being careful not to make your patient feel uncomfortable, but the nail beds on your hands can have that red change because you're applying more force as you palpate these deeper structures. The last step of the layer by layer palpation is what's called an erythema friction rub. And what an erythema friction rub is, is usually this is done on the patient's back. So on the 2D image, I want you to imagine that they're face down on an exam table. And you see those two black lines. You, you wanna take your pointer finger and your middle finger, and you wanna move paraspinally down their back. And what you wanna do is add enough force under your fingers where your, your nail beds have that reddish color change. So you're applying some force here and you wanna do a paraspinal friction rub. And what should happen here is you're looking for how long does it take for the skin to return to a normal color? And what color does the skin turn to that you just did that friction rub on? So in acute somatic dysfunction, because there's an acute problem and theoretically there's an inflammatory process happening, if there's acute somatic dysfunction and you apply a friction rub to that area, it should, the skin should turn red because there's that inflammatory response happening underneath the skin and it should, say, should stay red longer. It's not going to return to the normal, you know, normal color of the skin because that inflammatory process is taking place. If there's chronic somatic dysfunction, the area of the friction rub might actually blanch. So it won't be red when you do the friction rub, but it could be white. So idea here is, A, what color does the skin change to when I apply this paraspinal friction rub? And B, how long does it take for that to return to the normal color of the skin? So coming back, this is the summary slide here. This is your sequence of layer by layer palpation for OMT observation, temperature, light touch, which is skin and then fascia, deep touch, which is muscle, then tendons, then ligaments. And I didn't put tendons and ligaments on their own slide because all of those items, you're, you're pretty much doing the same thing. And then erythema friction rub. And that's pretty much it, guys. So I know that I ran through this and it was pretty quick. There's a little bit of variation to this depending on what medical school you go to or where you're learning this. But by and large, for the most part, this is all you need to know. Some questions could show up on Comlex, but this is actually a much higher yield concept for in-class exams and for those practicals where you have to actually go to the OMT lab and perform this sequence in front of somebody that's grading you.